Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at Tom Scholey's Godzilla's Monsterpiece Theater, issue one from IDW. Check out this freaking amazing cover. So much fun. Can't wait to share it with you guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. So they had this cover A and cover B available of Tom Scholey's new Godzilla miniseries, um, Monsterpiece Theater. I was so hoping for the Jim Rock variant. It is so cool. But of course, it was, I think, like a scarce retailer incentive. And they didn't have it. And it probably would have been unaffordable anyway. But it's pictured in the back of the book. And it is so cool. So stick around for the end so you can see it. Anyway, Tom Scholey is one of the those great, like, auteurs. You know, um, I, I was, like, looking at the concept of this. And I'm like, okay, so The Great Gatsby, Sherlock Holmes and this mystery person, spoilers. Um, so I feel in a lot of ways that this is sort of Tom Scholey's take on Godzilla meets the League of Ex Extraordinary Gentlemen. Um, story and art, Tom Scholey, edited by Jake Williams, production and design by Nathan Wittig. I love the design. It's very, um, like, uh, we lead off with, like, The Great Gatsby, so it's very, like, um, uh, what's that word uh, that I am looking for? I can't think of the word right now, but it'll come to me. I love Tom Scholey's storytelling. I love his sense of color. Um, I love the fact that this cover is kind of like, um, instead of white. Oh yeah, I've, this is a, an homage to Fantastic Four number one, right? Did I never, did I not get that initially? I guess I didn't. There have been so many homages to Fantastic Four number one, it completely glazed over me, but clearly that's what's happening here. But I love when they add like the yellowing or whatever to sort of get that distressed effect. It's kind of interesting to me that, you know, decades later, now that comics have been around for quite some time, you know, um, when people try to capture a vintage look or like, you know, the way that uh, comics were printed before, you know, things that would happen naturally through age or wear and tear that um, we apply to sort of get the look immediately. It very much reminds me of like distressed jeans. I had an interesting conversation with my cousin about acid wash jeans lately. We were obsessed. Have they made a comeback? They shouldn't. They're hideous. Um, anyway, really great story. It feels very much of its time. This is a great Godzilla story. I'm always on the fence about Godzilla comic books because I feel like it's kind of one of those properties, kind of like Aliens or Predator. Like, unless it's so well done, the competition with the movies is just so steep. And so to have like a brilliant, fun concept like this, because Godzilla is arguably like such an innocuous character, like you basically have to build a completely different story and then sort of insert him in it somehow in a way. Um, I love the historical references. I love the great Gatsby. This looks like a big, um, out of control, like, uh, you know, extravagant party. It's, I guess like it's a great Gatsby off, perhaps. I don't know. Um, you know, was this the big um, e-ticket back in the day? So he falls in love. So it's kind of a love story at the same time. It's Godzilla meets, you know, uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen with um, a romance thrown in. And the visuals are just funny. The flow of the story is amazing. It just is a real page turner. It feels very, um, almost cinematic in a way, just the way the pacing just keeps going. And I love, um, Godzilla by design to me looks a little goofy when you see, that's another reason why sometimes it doesn't work so great, um, in a comic book. Cause like <laughs> stills from Godzilla, you're always like, oh my gosh, is he kind of goofy? Like what's wrong with him? But when you see him in action, it's exciting and bombastic and amazing. I have to say, um, uh, my favorite Godzilla comic book still remains Wesley Griffith's uh, bootleg Godzilla 1954. It's amazing. It's sublime. I reviewed it on my stage channel. Wesley is one of my favorite cartoonists. And um, uh, 
this is shaping up to be my second favorite Godzilla comic because it's just a lot of fun. I don't know, like getting these characters together, like Gatsby, he goes to visit like Thomas Edison. He's trying to find a way to like rescue his missing love, Daisy, who got lost in this conflict with Godzilla and also create like a means to sort of deal with the problem of Godzilla going to people, um, making offers and coming up with solutions. He also visits Jules Verne and uh, this, I don't, um, this is a great page here. That looks horrifying. Like, um, see, this is when Godzilla can look really terrifying. I love him in the shadows, just looming over the city. This dead on shot of the city um, looks so cool. Um, I love this, his hand here, just picking up the the train. I mean, it's a well, very well done comic book, but you can tell he must have just had so much fun making it because every page is just like a gag. Like, I thought this, this made me laugh out loud a little bit um, when the horse whinnied and it's saying nay. Like, I love very literal things like that in comic books. Sometimes it cracks me up. See, just the, his use of color is like amazing and telling the story just as much as the words and pictures here. So I think that's always the benefit of having like a complete cartoonist, you know, someone who's doing the writing, um, penciling, inking, coloring, lettering, you know, they can control the complete narrative. And I think that um, a lot of times it really serves the purpose. Not to denounce, you know, great uh, collaborations, of course, but I just think, like, it's so much fun when you get a complete cartoonist. Um, love all the great, like, you know, just attention to detail and the thoughtfulness. And I love his inking style, like all the different textures and stuff. You know, Tom Scioli, uh, it's no secret that he's a huge uh, Kirby disciple. So there are a lot of nods to Kirby art in here. The G-Force, that's cracking me up. I love that they have like, a, he has like a pink outfit. Um, so the G-Force is like, it's, you know, named after the Gatsby, but it could easily be the Godzilla Force at this point. Um, it's just, it's kind of fun in that way to see like, iceberg. I love it. Like a Titanic um, joke or something. See, this is what I'm talking about here. Even though he does look kind of goofy, I still do love it. And the boat is split in half here. Like, um, it was fun. I don't know. I just feel like it's sort of Easter eggy in a way, like almost inserting Titanic without really putting it in. And then this bomb. I love that. It reminded me of like crop circles. And now we get Sherlock Holmes. Like how crazy is that? So this sort of completes like the whole like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen thing for me. Like recruiting, recruiting all these real historical figures. I don't know. Was I guess League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, were they real or were they public domain? I can't remember. I feel like they were real. But either way. This has those vibes for sure. So if you like that, you will probably like this. If you like um, Tom Scioli, you will probably like this. And if you like just really fun, hella well-made comic books um, by someone who truly, clearly loves making comic books, you will love this as well. Um, that's just fun. I mean, it's just fun. You know what I mean? Um, I feel... Like, this is just speaking to the little boy in me who watched Godzilla as a kid, who had a brother who had the great Shogun warrior Godzilla on wheels with the, you know, vinyl fire strip tongue and the launching fist that you could press the button in the crook of his elbow and it would launch across the room, scaring the crap out of my dog all the time. Hilarious. Loved it. Even Dracula is in here. So... I feel, and this is a great double page spread. This is so cool. This is amazing artistry all over the place here. Total money shot, totally worth it. Um, and there we go, the end of act one. I think this is a four issue miniseries. I'm not sure exactly how long it is, but what a great start we are off to. It is so good. I definitely will be following this for sure. That is that awesome, dope, Jim Rugg cover in the signature MFT Productions 
colors of, <laughs> yeah, like I own them, right? Um, but anyway, it spoke to me. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I wish I had it. It would make a great poster for sure. Good job, Jim. Anyway, good job, Tom Scioli as well. Another classic hit from Tom Scioli, Godzilla's Monster Peace Theater number one. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button, and I will bring you more soon.